we are going to continue on Project Frontier and we're going to get into the back box here. It's always uh, always a good surprise when you open up a head on a pinball machine to see what you're going to find inside. It's like uh, Horst Gump said, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to find inside. So here we are on the inside. Now we already took out the MPU. Showed you that yesterday. Uh, this controls all the lights on the game and around the game. And this is uh, basically uh, how the displays are powered and how all the features on the play field are powered, the slingshots and all that. And this is the sound board. This is where all the sounds are generated from. Uh, we're gonna be working on this as well. We're gonna be changing these capacitors because uh, they get old, they dry up and they don't work right. But today's Mr. Fix-It is gonna be the power supply. What stories could this tell? You know, this ain't right, I'll tell you right now. <laughs> this is not right. Uh, yeah, there's all kinds of good things going on. Anyway, we're going to take this out, and I'm going to show you uh, the process I go through every time I overhaul one of these, okay? There's going to be quite a few uh, parts of this uh, video, so let's get to it. The power supply out, and it's actually in pretty good shape. Uh, there's not a lot of corrosion or anything like that on it. Now, these are bridge rectifiers. These convert AC to DC. I think we talked about it in the last video. And it's field fixed. You know, a lot of the times they wanted just to get the games operating. They didn't really care what they looked like. This might work, but we're not going to rely on this kind of workmanship for something we want to do. But uh, so just real quick. Yeah, there's evidence over here of uh, discoloration, which means it gets hot, which is kind of normal with these things. Uh, fuses, obviously we're going to check to make sure they're good. We'll probably replace them with new and we'll make sure the uh, the amperage is proper for this board. Now, if we look inside the head, obviously, if, you know, this is where you look for evidence. Best practice, by the way, make sure you put all the bolts back or the nuts or screws or whatever uh, back where you took them out. You could label them and bag them and do all that stuff, but whatever. I just like to put them back and then that way I know where they are and where they go. Here's some evidence of previous repairs. A bit of solder blob there, uh, which is probably from when they replaced uh, this bridge over here. And we kind of got a couple of uh, blown fuses. Okay, these were hiding behind there. And not sure what this is about. There's just some random wire sticking out. So well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean it all up, make sure she's nice, clean and tidy. And we will go through the exercise of detailing it back here so that it uh, looks a lot more presentable. Not that you ever see what's going on back here while you're playing the game, but it's just uh, something that I like to do. Okay, so the next uh, video, we're going to be in the shop. Um, I'll show you the tools I use and I'll also show you what uh, uh, what parts uh, we're going to need and how to, you know, test some of the other components, okay? We'll see you in a bit. And my fellow Russians, I'm going to see if I'm going to try to make sense out of this for you. So we're working on the transformer and I'm rounding up all the parts we need to uh, overhaul it. So this is a manual. It's, this one's actually for a Paragon, I think, but uh, they're, they're pretty well all the same. Shows you a picture of the transformer. Looks very similar to that, obviously. And then it gives you a parts breakdown of uh, the various uh, components and the part numbers and the values. So I'm going to show you something real quick here. If we go to uh, R3, now we're going to look down the list here. We're going to find, oh, there's R3. It's a resistor. And it's a hundred kilo ohm quarter watt. All right, what does that mean? Doesn't really matter. You don't really need to know what the stuff is or how it works. You just need to know how to diagnose it and see if it's any good. So I'm back on the board here. Okay, here's R3. Okay, I have my multimeter here. I'm gonna try to do this with one hand. And what I'm gonna do, resistors you can check in the board. The diodes you can. I'll show you what the diodes are in a second. But we're on. Ah, come on, you little bugger. <laughs> Did I get it? Yeah. Oh, almost had it. Not as easy as it looks with one hand, guys. I got small fingers, too. There we go. Okay. So I'm on the money. And then the meter. And I'll take it off and put it back on just so you can see it. Okay, 
This is measuring exactly 100 kilo ohms, which is the reading for R3 here. Okay, 100 kilo ohms. All right, so that resistor checked good. Now I'm gonna give you a really quick uh, breakdown. So anyway, you can check, you know, the big resistor here, uh, that resistor as well. And again, uh, you just look at the manual, you find the corresponding, so R1, for example, R1 is a 600 ohm, 10 watt resistor. Uh, the 10% gives you uh, some variance so, for example, if it, if it measures at 570 ohms, it's still good because you're within 10% plus or minus of the 600 ohm uh, value, okay? And then you just shoot down uh, the list for everything uh, you need to check as far as the uh, voltages and all the, um, not voltages, sorry, all the measurements. So now I'm into the actual schematic in the book, which gives you a um, representation of each component. Here's the back of the power supply. There's the one bridge rectifier that's on it. We are actually going to mount them on this side. I'll show you that in a second. But we're also going to replace this pin here because it is a bit crispy. Shows evidence of uh, heat stress. So we're going to go through that exercise. And on this side of the board, remember, we're going to check uh, for cold solder joints like we've talked about in the past. I'll actually reflow all of it. And the way we're going to do it, well, first of all, you just, you know, clean off all the dirt and debris. Oh, this is interesting. November 7, 1980. Wow, 41 years old, eh? Incredible and still going. We can replace this entire assembly. They make them uh, new. The only thing you can't get are the transformers. But where's the fun in that, right? Yeah, I can go spend a hundred bucks, replace it, and then be done with it. But no challenge. And what's life without a challenge, right? Uh, so anyway, that, and this is the tool that we're going to use to suck out the solder. This is prograde, guys. I think I, I paid like three, 350, 400 bucks, but it is absolutely the best tool uh, to do any uh, soldering or any detailed work like this. And basically, um, it's not on, but this end, the tip, gets crazy hot. And what it does is you, you put, put it up to uh, the joint, pull the trigger, and it literally sucks the solder uh, into this chamber. So I'll show it to you when we, when we get into uh, taking apart, uh, taking out some of the components. But, you know, it's hard to do it with one hand. Okay, so uh, let's, let's get on with it. Okay, here's the hot go. Press the button and it sucks. And we are going up here because this is the header pin we're replacing. So you can see it melts it. Well, you can't see that, but <laughs> melts it. Pull the trigger and see how it sucked it up. Kind of wiggle it. Just of what's going on here, right? And last but not least. Okay, let's see. I don't think it's going to all come out just yet, but. Just got to work a little bit more, but you can see the pins are basically ready to go right out. See how the whole thing, I'm just wiggling it. Okay, I need another hand here, guys, so I'll turn you back on once I get these things out, okay? So this is a fiber pen. What it has, it's uh, made out of fiberglass, basically, and instead of sandpaper, what you do is you clean off the joints you're going to be soldering and it gives you nice contact. I think you can see that, right? So look here. Okay. 
here, and you do front and back. All right, here's all the uh, diodes that I took out. And if you notice, uh, there's a couple things I'll show you. Let me just give it a quick clean. And then I'll fill you in on what we're gonna do. All right, I'm gonna do the back too. I'll do that off camera because I think you get the idea of what's going on. All right, this is where the bridges are gonna go on top. And here is a sample of a bridge that we're gonna use. You can see this is the one I took out. Hold on, we'll put them side by each and I'll lift the camera up and I'll also show you a diode. All right, so let's lift you up here. This is the bridge I took out. Okay, that was uh, right here, that's an original. Uh, here's one that was, that one that was uh, put on the board. Okay, it's taken out. So we're gonna replace uh, these three with three of these on top of the board. And this is a diode, okay? A diode is basically a one-way gate. It allows uh, electricity to flow that way, but it can't go that way. And if we look at the board, uh, these are the diodes that I took out, and you see that arrow, that's what it's representing, down but not up. So when I put these in, I'm actually gonna put them in and I'm gonna raise them off the board uh, just for, they get hot, uh, and so do bridge rectifiers, and that's why. Now we have the heat sink on the back, but with this one elevated, it'll get good airflow and it'll cool it down. Oh, and here is the burnt pin, the connector that we took out. You can see how it's all discolored and uh, heat and electrical components don't, uh, don't go very well together and it just won't conduct uh, power very well. So that's why we're, we're gonna be replacing it with the new header pin here. Okay, so I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set it all up. Obviously I pulled all the fuses out, uh, checked all the clips. They have their tension. Uh, I'll just give them a quick shining up. These things are a real pain in the you know what to replace. Uh, and to be quite honest with you, I, we're in lockdown. Uh, the supplies I have on hand are what I'm using. Uh, I would probably replace all these pins uh, if it were a different time and if I had the supplies to do it. But to that end, these ones aren't bad, so I'm not really too worried about it. Okay, we'll bring it back. All right, let's solder. So these are the header pins down here. These are the diodes up here. Uh, sorry about the noise in the background. Uh, it's the fan, the exhaust fan, just to exhaust some of this solder. Uh, not good for you. Oh, also, you wanna use some flux. Okay, this is what I use. It's basically a, like a pen. You just take the tip off and uh, you just dab where you're gonna solder. It helps the stuff stick. Listen, if I'm covering it with my fat fingers, I apologize. I'm doing the best I can. I'm just, uh, here's the exercise of reflowing the header pins. Okay, make sure that when you're doing this, that they're all, in this case, these are all connected. This one here is not. You don't want to connect something that uh, shouldn't be because then you have a, a serious short. This one's good. Again, there is no evidence of any um, cracking, but it's just a good practice to, to, uh, to go over it, especially since we've identified this is 40, 41 years old. And now we're just going to go right across here. 